excellence. You remember the campaign that Dr. Murray ran on? Had that word excellence. We've got a new era of excellence in athletic campaign. Go ahead, Colton. Fire it up. So we have an architectural video for you. Of what it would look like. So this is William Street, and you'll know the Highway, Mountain Highway 57 and William Street. Formal entrance, of course, the bell tower now is at the end of that street. <coughs> We're going to start with the soccer field and just some updates to the seating and to the players' benches. Uh, the soccer field will, will stay where it is currently. Here you can see a, a, a new press box, a press box uh, just uh, right now. Uh, we have to screen all of our live stream, all of our sports. So it's required by the River States. But right now we're sitting on the ground right, right in front of the little table. So this can provide us a press box, a place to, to do that kind of streaming of the games. The other thing is what now the I come up is dugouts of the teams. A little, a little covering uh, for the uh, home and visitor teams. So not a huge update. On the soccer field, the soccer field is pretty nice at the moment, uh, but with the extra seating and with the press box. <coughs> right now, our uh, women's uh, softball field is not on campus, it is off campus, and we want to bring it back to campus. Um, uh, and have it right beside the baseball field and have it uh, with equal um, uh, equality with a uh, baseball field. Uh, and so that it would mean that it's going to go currently on the space where the tennis courts are. Where the tennis courts are, and the tennis courts you'll see in a moment will be moved. Uh, but it will go there right by uh, the baseball field. softball field is, so they have to be moved. Uh, they will be moved here uh, behind the Deaconess Clinic. As you drove in, uh, they will be behind there. Uh, we have already had a naming donation for this uh, tennis complex. Uh, he, the, the, the gentleman who's giving the money, has already informed me that uh, they, the tennis courts are facing the wrong way. Uh, they're supposed to run north-south, not east-west. So uh, we, I, I told our I fired our architects immediately. <laughs> so we got we got to switch them around. And with the tennis courts, two will have six right now. We currently have five. Currently have five. You need six to play in the collegiate sports. So yeah, <laughs> or it makes it a lot easier than six. Uh, new baseball field, baseball field where it is. Uh, as you drove in, you saw right now the dugouts are metal. Uh, sheeting uh, will be bricked, have a new press box, uh, new stadium seating, um, and really and the fencing and all really provides a major upgrade to uh, the baseball field. You see the blue oak wall out there in the right field? That'll be a little higher, so you have to have a little bit extra height to get over it. Uh, but pretty cool, neat little uh, adding to the, to the baseball field. We have a donor we're talking to about naming the, stigma, naming the complex. He's even talking about well, what happens if we make it to a stadium where we have covering over the seating and, and grandstand seating. So we're excited about him being excited about that. So it could be even more enhanced than this.
the addition to the Johnson Center, um, one of the things both uh, Ken French and um, uh, Picara Malone have talked to us about is the locker rooms. Um, uh, the locker rooms are a little outdated. They don't have the, the up-to-date feel. There aren't going to be wood panels like uh, the, the University down in Georgia, but they are going to have a nice update feel to them. And again, that's, again, the coaches are saying, this is what uh, the students are looking for. This is, they want to have that. And we'll go to the locker room. They can spend a lot of time there. This is what they're going uh, to experience. So the locker room updates, uh, new, uh, new version of the Athletics Hall of Fame, uh, digital in nature, so you can go up and, and, and learn about the different folks that are in the Hall of Fame. Uh, from a digital perspective, uh, the new, you can see the new kind of blue seating on the seats, uh, trying to enhance the, the seating, uh, as well as in the center section, uh, there will be uh, seat uh, backs. So they'll, they'll be in the middle. So if you are a, um, someone who purchases a, a, a season tickets, you would have a seating in the center and you would have a designated seat uh, within the Johnson Center. The, yeah, the, the floor will, floor right now will, will remain the same. It is a wood floor, yes, sir. At some point in time, we are going to have to redo it, but probably it'll be about another five years to, to do that. But we, we will probably remain with a wood floor. I would just add, too, Johnson Center was built in 1986, so that was 35 years ago, and it's time to do some of these updates. The bleachers especially, you can hardly get them in and out. So uh, I like the bleachers too because you've got the chair backs, as Dr. Dempsey mentioned, in the middle for our varsity club. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 trust me, I, 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 think it was, uh, I think it was probably our, the first basketball game when I, when I, after I became president. I'm there, and I'm you know just going around greeting people, and and had a lady say, "Hey, can you get some handrails?" And, and and mention that first step, and that's the idea. This will be an enhancement to that. There will be handrailings and dealing with uh, being able to accessibility up and down the the, the stairs. So you have the brochure there, and our goal is $2.5 million. As Dr. Dempsey mentioned, we've already had several uh, folks that we're talking to. Uh, on the softball field, we met with the bank yesterday in approaching our corporate partners on women's sports, trying to help us with that softball area. But we'd like for you to consider and, and look at that and see if it's something uh, that you would have interest in. Obviously, athletics and your time here at OCU. Um, but also, we were talking about this yesterday, too, Dr. Dempsey and I, about you know, if you would have interest in remembering uh, Coach Disler and Betty in a way, I know you've done the scholarship and that's great, but I know the committee has also talked about other ways to uh, support the university. So uh, this can definitely be that. Are there any questions that Dr. Dempsey and I can answer? Um, we have, um, uh, depending on what enterprise of the campus we're talking about. So we're talking about uh, the main campus. We have roughly 400 undergraduate students. Uh, we have about 200 graduate students. So about 600 on this campus. Uh, then we have what is called our non-traditional enterprise. Uh, we have uh, five, well, four um, uh, adult pro, uh, professional sites. Evansville, Bedford, Rockport, and Jasper. Uh, and then we also have some kind of industry sites uh, at, in, at Indiana Power and Light and over at the new Toyota plant where we do graduate programming. Uh, and we also have as part of the non-traditional our online program. So that population is about another 500 students. So about, uh, you know, 900, eh, let's see, 800 undergrad and about 300 uh, graduate students, so about 1,100 students. I just had two in terms of enrollment. I was talking with several people earlier. This past fall was our highest enrollment on main campus since 2012, so in eight years. And projections for this fall 
are about 50, I'm projecting 15 to 20 percent more. Uh, we're going to be, we were about 330 this past fall. This coming fall, I think we're 380 to 400 <coughs> by everything I'm seeing. Yeah, so. and, and the semester, the year before I came, we were, we had, we were at about 285, which really was unsustainable. And so we had to, we had to grow the undergraduate program back. So uh, we, my first semester, we, we bopped up above 300. And then last fall, we're 330. We should be somewhere 375, 380 this fall. Uh, the goal uh, is t we need to be above, back above 500, uh, really to be sustainable uh, into the future. So that's what we're that's what we're getting gearing toward. So. Well, it, it, you know, it, it is uh, the 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 one thing that um, we've that I've started doing that I don't think we were doing before is that we were not effectively using social media and digital media. Um, and we have brought a company in from St. Louis that I've worked with before, and they have done a great job. And 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 we have we have some we have good data of, of the hits you're getting in different places, which we like to pull from. Um, some anecdotal information: we had a, a, a alum from Louisville who came up. She was a graduate in business and accounting, uh, is working back down there in Louisville, and she said, "I don't know what you are doing." But when I came to, you know, OCU seven years ago, nobody in Louisville knew who you were. I mean, I came here because I, I got recruited to play golf. Um, and she said, now you guys, you guys are one of the people everybody talks about just because of the social media and, and a slightly scary way in which social media knows where you are and what you're doing. Um, I, 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 you know, these guys, these folks, these, you know, they all, they all come in from this group and they're all, you know, 35 and younger and they start talking about how this geofencing and all this kind of stuff, I kind of get a little, whoa, just don't, don't tell me, just do it. <laughs> but, you, I mean, I get it, I, I'm teaching a doctoral class uh, uh, for the School of Education and, and uh, one of our my folks in there works down at uh, Evansville School Corporation. And she said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm scrolling all my stuff, and you know, Oakland City just keeps coming up. I'm like, yes, good. That's what I want to see. So um, it's really been beneficial to get our name out there. So uh, I think it's helping. I think it's working. Uh, you know, people worry about, you know, the demographic fall off we're going to have in high school students. I, you know, when I tell people I'm not concerned about it, they think I'm crazy. But I'm, I'm, not, as con I'm not as concerned about it as others are because the niche group that we pull from I don't think it's going to be affected by the fall off. Uh, I think the, the, the groups that's going to be affected by it are the public comprehensive universities like USI or Indiana Coco, you know, you know, Kokomo or somewhere like that. Because as soon as Purdue and IU start sensing a little uh, drop in their enrollment, they're just going to open up the spigot and let more of their uh, students in. And it's going to pull from the public comprehensive, not from us. So I think that's what's going to happen over the next 10 years. So I'm, I'm confident that we can sustain this growth over time and get back to, uh, to being over 500. So, Any other questions you have in general about athletics or about the school? Yes, sir. I have a player who just got his doctorate in Well, we have a great, as you all, many of you know, we have a great reputation of producing educators. I mean, that's uh, as one of our top branding that we have. And it's nice now that not only are we producing folk teacher, folks who are going on in teaching, but now we have folks at the master's level and the doctoral level who are in upper and uh, higher administration within a lot of school corporations. So yeah, we very pleased about that. I think it, it was, uh, it was a, it's something that we're known for. Uh, and I think people, people come um, here, they know they're getting a good degree from a great school that has an awesome reputation when it comes to education. Really do. Other questions you might have of me? Yes, yes, we'll do the lady in the back and then we'll go here. 
Ja, det var gången. Yes. 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 That is, that is correct. Uh, when I came uh, in 19, we were facing about a $1.2 million structural deficit. And, and so we had a three-year plan uh, to get out of that. We actually accomplished that plan in a year, which was good. But it did require us um, losing some majors. And the way we do that, and this was asked at the alumni event on Saturday, is that we have uh, what is called program review of all our departments. Uh, and the program you know, review looks at number of faculty, number of majors, a lot of quantitative but also some qualitative aspects to the major. Uh, and, and with that, um, I don't want to say there's a ranking, but obviously you look and say, well, if you have low majors, then, and if we unfortunately have to cut, then they get on the chopping block. So music had two majors and art had one. So, and I think, again, this probably had a little bit to do with us being too focused on music and art in relation to education. And so as we saw out in the K through 12 world, music and education, music and art dropping off at a lot of schools, then we, we, people were coming and they weren't pursuing that, you know, as, as a major. So, you know, I hope that um, when we get it back above 500 and then we, I feel like we get foundation, uh, pretty firm foundation, I, you know, I want to revisit because that is a very uh, important part of the history of OCU, you know. But I doubt very seriously it's going to come back as music or art education. It's going to come, we're going to have to look at, wh you know, where I, the, what I'm trying to get our folks to think about is distinctiveness. You know, how can Oakland City be distinctive from the other, you know, independent private colleges? You know, we, we've got to somehow set ourselves apart and just doing the same thing that they do isn't going to work. So, you know, if we look at music, what do you bring back? You know, who's, who's offering what? You know, is music technology the new way to go? Don't know. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, had to deal with it, and um, that was the way in which we did. Oh, no, no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind the question. Um, uh, and like I said, I, I, Susan and Megan, Brian, no, I'm pretty transparent about I, I, but I also feel like we made we made we look at the right data, and we've got to make those decisions. I'd love to wait one day to bring it back. I'd love to one day uh, reinstitute the the theatrical plays that OC used to do. Right now, we just don't have the person on the campus to do that, uh, and we need to do that. You know, and so when we get back on more stable uh, stable financial ground, I feel like we'll be able to readdress those issues. So, yes, sir. Yeah. And I don't know whether they spread too thin and uh, tied too many things and got in trouble. Uh, and I just wondered if there was safe while they were closed. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should have attended my doctoral class this week because we talked all about that. Um, higher ed <laughs> has a tendency um, that when enrollment goes up, that, that we will follow that enrollment with staffing and faculty and all that. But then enrollment starts doing this, and yet we keep doing this. And that's where I think, you know, I, I know Chris uh, Petrushevitz and he and I have talked, and that's what happened, you know. Not necessarily under his watch, it was happening before his watch, is that the enrollment was going down at University of Evansville, and, and yet the, the faculty and staff remained the same without following um, the, you know, look and, and, you know, using nutrition or whatever it may be to eliminate some position. So that's, it's, and that they just caught up with them and they have to do that. Ours happened on a little smaller scale than U of E's. U of E really, they lost about 20 faculty. Like I said, we lost two. So, you know, it, but that has to, but that's a, that is a typical higher ed problem is that we do not, we, we just don't, we're not like corporate, and so when, when, the, when the profits go down, we get rid of people. We, we, have, a, we have a difficult time doing that, so. 
Any other questions I can ask before I leave? Be happy to answer. Yes, sir. What are the most popular uh, degrees? Or right now, the top degrees are business, education, and criminal justice. Those are our top uh, majors right now. So, no, bi business. So, business, business accounting, HR, sports man, a lot of concentrations, but a business degree. And then education, so largely early childhood, uh, special education, um, somewhat, not as much uh, secondary ed um, certification, but uh, th that's second, and then criminal justice is third. So we're, and, we're, and we're right now dealing with, criminal justice is staying strong. We've seen some fall-offs uh, over the last five or six years, and this is, this is how powerful uh, the media is. Uh, the reason we saw uh, increases in criminal justice during the late 90s and 2000, can anybody guess why? Shows like CIS, CSI, sorry. Yeah, CSI, I'm not kidding. They like CSI, they like CSI Los Angeles, CSI Texas, CSI Oakland City, I don't know where we are now in, in all that, but uh, you know, Students see that, ooh, I wanna go into forensic science. And now we're beginning to see that wane a bit. So I, I guess we're gonna have to start having a superhero heroes uh, major, I don't know. Train people to be superheroes, that may be the next iteration, so. But those are our top three. Well, just to add too on technology, we, under Dr. Dempsey, yeah. when he came in, he had the vision for new technology programs. So, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, look, looking at our looking at the offerings that we have, um, we we were we were missing two areas. One, we were missing technology, and we're missing healthcare. Um, and healthcare is a little more expensive, so that's going to be a little more time in coming. But we did. We we have now this. It'll open up this fall, and and they're already. Um, but students are already coming to those majors, uh, computer science, and uh, another major called creative technologies. Um, the way I describe creative technologies, it's engineering without the math. <laughs> My engineering friends, because I came from an engineering university, hate that when I say that, but that's the idea. I mean, students are gonna learn coding, uh, they're gonna learn prototyping, they're gonna learn circuit boarding, and they're gonna learn to make, they're, they're gonna be a lot of hands-on. We, uh, we have a $250,000 grant from Toyota to build a creative technologies lab. So it'd be like a maker space where they can come in and play and build chips and do all this neat stuff that I know I probably couldn't do. Um, and it, like I said, it's opening up this fall and we're, we've already have, we already have seven computer science majors and four creative technology majors. So very excited about those new programs. We're gonna look at healthcare. I will tell you immediately, we probably are not gonna look at nursing that's immediately what everybody thinks about. Um, USI has nursing, U of E has nursing, um, Ivy Tech has nursing. Nurf nursing is an amazingly expensive program to run. We will look at, again, look at that more niche healthcare major um, that hopefully is not as expensive uh, to operate, but you know, can get us 10 to 15 students. That's a, you know, that's a big deal for us, so it really is. All right, well again, I, I just wanna say thank you for, again, your years of commitment to this place. I know I, I, I heard of the Distler Group when, when I came in. Unfortunately, didn't have a chance to meet you last year. Uh, so this is um, a great time. And again, if you ever have any opportunities uh, to be on campus, let us know. Uh, we'd love to entertain you. And anytime, you are welcome here at uh, OCU. So thank you.